Hello and welcome back to the Ground Up Advanced Flight Tutorials. Thank you very much for joining me in this video. And today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a demonstration of what I taught in the last lesson as well as expanding upon that. So we were talking about stalls in the last lesson. And in this one, we're actually going to take off, going to get to a certain altitude, and I'm going to show you how to practice stalls in a safe environment, how to recover from stalls. We're going to be looking at the different types of stalls in a bit more detail. So in the last episode or the last lesson, I talked about the different types of stalled power on, power off, where a stall would occur, how a stall would occur, and what happens in terms of the lift coefficient and losing the lift off the wing and the aerodynamics and the, the sort of the stagnation point, which is what is called behind the wing, where you have, where you can't actually have the differential in pressure anymore because the streamlines aren't connected and that gives the wing no lift, the coefficient of zeros, uh, the coefficient of lift goes to zero and because of the equation of lift, which is, um, lift is equal to the coefficient of lift multiplied by the air density, multiplied by the velocity squared over 2 multiplied by the area of the wing that equation if the coefficient of lift is 0 the rest of the equation doesn't matter anymore because 0 multiplied by anything is 0 which is why you can stall an aircraft even at high speed but most aircraft stalls happen at low speed because of the nature of the lift of the wing so if ve velocity is also involved in this but we also talked about how a wing stall is not a function of speed it's a function of the coefficient of lift it's not slow speed that stalls a wing it is uh, the coefficient of lift going past a critical angle of attack on the wing therefore reducing the coefficient of lift to zero that stalls the wing dropping out of lift though not being able to generate enough lift that can come from slow speed so it's all it's all tied in together anyway uh, before i continue if you guys do like these videos please remember to hit that like button share the video subscribe to the channel leave comments and please do support me on patreon links that is in the description box below um, if you do choose to support me and you choose to give more than uh, five dollars a month to me which will allow me to continue making these videos and growing the channel and making things as best as I can. You also get access to the Flight Sim World tutorial channel on the Discord server and there's a lot of information on there. I have been talking to a couple of people who already support me uh, in that way with regards to all the stuff that I'm teaching. I go into even more depth on there. I have a look. You can send me your videos of your flights and that and I will have a look and show you exactly where you went wrong, what's happened, what's not happened and then let you, you guys can can learn from there so it's actually a really really nice fun place to be but um let's have a look let's have a look so what we're going to do is we're going to take off i'm going to run you i'm going to run you through uh the different types of stalls once again before we take off and then i'm going to go up we're going to take off and we're going to practice this so the first two stalls that i want to run you through is going to be the um let me think the power on and power off stall so we're going to go through the power on and power off we're going to try power off first the reason we're going to do power off first is because that's the more common stall you normally stall when the power is off or in a very low condition which is basically when you're coming into, for example, land on the runway. That's where you end up having the most chance of a stall or turning from base to final with low power. That's where you have the most chance of a stall, so on and so forth. So let me explain the procedure of what's going to happen on both these stalls. You can come back to this moment in the video, wherever it is, if you want to, once we're in the air, if you want to actually uh, come back to understand what we're about to do before actually doing it. So don't forget, you can come back to this point in the video. That's the, uh, that's the great point, part about uh, not having things live. Uh, having things recorded you can just always go back and forward so what we're going to do is we're going to smoothly once we're up to a certain altitude we're going to probably climb to about 3,000 feet today so we're going to climb to about 3,000 feet we're going to cut the power nice and smoothly so we're going to bring the power down almost to idle then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we can hold our heading as we're bringing the power down and we have to make sure we can hold our altitude so the vertical speed needs to remain as close to zero as you can get it now we're not going to be doing this with the trim we're actually going to be using the yoke here so once we're trimmed at 3000 from that point we are going to use the yoke to do everything that we need to do this is very important we don't want to be using trim for this 
not good practice to do it in trim con uh, in that trimmed condition i know that i think now they start uh, doing more about having incorrect trims than that but to understand the stall you're going to have to do this with the yoke you're going to be using the yoke to lift the nose of the aircraft to keep the vertical speed to zero as the aircraft slows down and that's how the angle of attack is going to increase on the wing until we get to that critical angle of attack so what we're going to do is as we as we slow down we're going to be pulling up on the yoke to make sure or pulling back on the yoke to make sure that the vertical speed is remaining at zero now what's going to start happening is you're going to you're going to start finding that the wing is going to or the aircraft is, might start wanting to go left and right what you want to do there is you want to start using a little bit of rudder just a little bit just to help keep the aircraft straight do not use the ailerons to keep the aircraft straight if you can help it if you use a very slight amount of aileron that's going to be okay as you come into the stall but do not use the ailerons because when a wing stalls the first thing you lose control of is the aileron and by adding an aileron in when you go into a stall you actually stall one wing further than the other and it'll do the opposite of what you expect so by doing that you might actually drop the aircraft to the left that's how that's how it's going to work you end up doing the opposite of what you want it's not a good idea to do this so what we're going to do is we're going to be doing that and we're, as we pull up as we slow down and pull up you're going to notice that the first first thing you're going to notice is some sort of buffeting or uh, you'll, you'll feel the aircraft shake you're going to hear the aircraft shake as well that's the first sign of a stall that is actually called the incipient stall so that's going to be the first sign of a stall it's not a full stall it's just the the start of a stall it's about to stall then we're going to get up to the point where it's starting the aircraft starts to shake quite a bit you're definitely going to hear it in this aircraft it's going to shake a whole amount uh, that is called a partial stall so the, because of that the airflow of the aircraft is starting to stall the wings and it's all going kind of wrong following that you're going to start feeling that shake and then the nose of the aircraft is going to try and drop the wings are going to try and roll and every, basically the aircraft is going to try and fall out the sky that is the point of stall now if as we do the stall this is something interesting that i was trying off camera if as we do the stall we try and hold that nose up we are now aggravating the stall we don't want to follow we don't want to do that because if we keep doing that and then we apply some rudder what's going to happen is we're going to end up spinning our aircraft we don't want to do that because we haven't learned how to spin yet so we're going to do this all those things that i just said apart from the aggravated stall and then we're going to do two types of recovery i think we might only do one stall in this video um, depending on how long it takes the two types of recovery we're going to do recovery number one we're going to lower the nose towards the horizon so we're going to line up the nose with the horizon again or maybe just go a little bit below to get the speed up so we're going to bring that down as we do that we're going to bring the throttles up to full power once again we're going to bring the throttles up and we're going to make sure the wings are level using the rudder right we're going to use the rudder and any flaps that we have on we're going to get rid of the flaps so we as we slow down we're actually going to apply some flaps to practice this and then after that we're going to actually get rid of the flaps as we start coming out of the stall once we get out of those once we get out of the stall and we're starting to speed up what's going to happen is we're going to lose about a hundred a hundred foot in in height maybe 150 feet um, in fact because we're learning we might lose more but we're looking for about a hundred 150 feet to do to have a correct uh, a correct recovery and then once we've lost that we're actually going to be fast enough to actually climb again but at that point what we're going to do is we're going to level the aircraft off back at the height uh, back at, in a condition where the speed is up again out of the flap range maybe you know 120 knots or something and our vertical speed is once again zero then we can continue our climb and do whatever we want the other way we're going to do this we're going to do the exact same thing but without adding any more power so we're actually not going to add any power on the second attempt so that's two ways to do it i can't remember what the way without power is called is it a character stall or characteristic stall so 
imagine your aircraft has stalled. Um, sorry, imagine your aircraft engine has died and you end up stalling the aircraft. That's how you're going to recover. So we're going to have, once again, one with power and one without power as we come out of the stall. But going into the stall, both are going to have no power. So let's go ahead and get this prepared and let's do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up the ILS for this airport should we choose to return to it. So it's a 109.5, right? No. What is it, 109.35? There we go, 109.35. And we've also got a 115.7, which is going to be uh, the Trent VOR, which is not far from here. Uh, if you don't understand about VORs and everything, you should go back and have a look at the uh, video where I explain the ILS, I explain VORs, I explain NDBs. So that's going to be very, very important. I'm going to leave the yoke on for this so you can see that I am actually pulling back on the yoke just as you guys were and not in any other way. Uh, the propellers can go to full, the mixture can go to full for us. There we go. Everything's now at 100. We're not going to make any adjustments there. We're just going to climb up to two and a half or 3,000 feet and then do what we need to do. So, here we go. Flaps down to one. Is that one? Just double checking. Yep, that's down to one. Let's do this. Uh, I'm just going to straighten this up for you guys and I will lower the nose just slightly so you can see the yoke a little bit better and we're just going to try and stay in a straight line here at 90 uh, if we want to if we want to do so in fact no I tell you what we'll do as we climb we'll we'll turn to a heading of 360 then we'll turn to a heading of 270 heading back um, I think that would be probably easier for us so here we go power up nice and slowly once again don't forget that rudder go 75 knots is my rotation speed today smooth rotate okay 80 knots I guess positive rate gear up and flaps up looks like I've got a little bit of rudder trim that I need to work on but we're going to there we go we're okay we drifted off a little bit, but we're coming back onto where we need to where we need to get to. I'm going to trim for a 500 foot per minute climb. As you can see, I am now doing so. And there we have it. Fantastic. So up, up and away. Very, very nicely. good climb rate and we're just going to continue the climb for a little while before we make our turn to a heading of 360 and naturally we're also going to make sure we try and keep our heading on 090 which I've drifted to 088 at this moment in time so I'm just going to correct that right now and you can see we're maintaining about 95 knots with a 500 foot per minute climb Okay, we'll continue along here until we're about 1,200 feet and then we'll do our turn. Or we'll begin our turn. There's 1,100. And we're almost there. 1,180. 1,200. Begin the turn. Don't forget to keep the turn coordinated. Don't forget to lift up on the nose ever so slightly as we turn. We're not going to do anything, any major turning here today. We're just doing nice, smooth turns. Like so. Keeping the nose up, keeping the 500 foot per minute climb rate. Very simple, very easy. Right on a heading of 360. roll out nice and easy brilliant watch that nose slightly we did drop our climb rate ever so slightly but we're doing okay it was odd we had a little bit of lag there today as well 
which is a little bit odd. Don't recall that happening before. We have a very mild breeze, it seems. But we're completely okay. We don't have to... Remember, we, we're not looking here to keep the speed of the aircraft... Oh, sorry, not the speed. We're not looking here to keep the heading of the aircraft absolutely perfect whilst we're getting up to the climb height or the, the height that we're going to level off at. All right. So at 2,000 feet, we're just going to continue a little, a little while in this direction. Uh, the Trent VOR is over in that way, somewhere. Not too far. I am going to get head tracking working on this eventually. We are going to continue our climb at 90 knots. As you can see, it's going pretty well. We'll climb up to 2,500 feet and we will turn to a heading of 270 fairly soon. As a matter of fact, whilst we're doing this, let me tune up the Trent VOR to be for... Let me just set it for 270 for now, just in case. That way we know it's still, still a ways ahead, so we need to go forward and turn if we are to get onto the Trent VOR, which we're not at this moment in time. We don't have to worry about that. I'm actually going to switch that to Nav 2 as well to show how far away we are. It'll take us 11 minutes to get there. At this speed, we're about 18 miles away. Okay, we're at 2,500 feet. So I think we will stop bringing ourselves, we'll start trimming ourselves for some level flight right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to enter slow speed flight. So we're first going to trim for slow speed flight and then we're going to do, we're going to then slow the aircraft down even further. So at this point I'm going to turn to a heading of 270. Like so. Nice and easy. Keeping that turn coordinated. Keeping ourselves on a vertical speed of around zero. I am going to let it drop just a little bit to get ourselves back down to two and a half thousand feet nicely. About 20 foot high. About 40 feet high actually. As we go around. And we can start leveling off now for 270. There we go. 270. Trim that down. We're at 2,600 feet, we're going to reduce the power and we're going to slow down first, initially, to 90 knots. So let's get that, let's get that slowing down now. We go about 2,500 feet now, and we will get that trimmed as perfectly as we can for about 90 knots. That looks about right to me. I think we're doing fairly well there. Okay, so now we're going to actually bring in one stage of flaps. There's one stage of flaps. Now we're going to retrim. And this is why I wanted the extra height. There's a retrim. And we're maintaining 90 knots even with that one stage of flaps. Now we're slowing down. This is fine though because we are entering slow speed flight. So we're going to slow down even further than this in a minute. Bring the throttles back even more now. Maintain the trim. And very, very shortly, I think we're going to get down to 80 knots now. And then from there, we're going to stop trimming and we're going to start using the yoke. Alright, so we're trimmed at this point in time. So we know what we're doing. We're heading in a specific direction, 270. 
and we're maintaining about two and a half thousand feet okay so now we're going to bring this back even further and pull back on the stick as we bring the power down and you can see what's happening now we're increasing the angle of attack now we use the rudder here we are now using the rudder a little bit of aileron but mostly rudder idle that power there's the idle power now there's the start of the stall keep it going and there's the stall so now we're going to do this bring the power smoothly up and there we have it we've recovered from the stall okay we'll do that again bring that power down once again back to idle power and keep the aircraft from falling out the sky now we lost about 200 feet there that was only because I wanted to keep showing you keep going keep going keep going there's the incipient there's the incipient stall there's the partial stall there's the full stall bring that down power up back to maximum and get back into level flight there we go and now we can climb again we lost about 150 foot there which is fantastic okay so now let's get ourselves climbing a little bit more so we'll continue the climb we're going to retrim maximum power we're going to retrim for and climb ourselves back up to two and a half thousand feet then we're going to do a power off one which is very similar to the power on uh, sorry we're going to do a power off recovery not a power power on stall or a power off stall still a power off stall but a power on uh, power off recovery this time so we did two power on recoveries we're going to do a power off recovery now and you'll see the difference it'll take a little bit longer to recover so that's why I'm going to actually climb a little bit more now yeah I think that looks like a decent height we've given it a little bit more power let's bring that back down and you notice that we've actually moved from where we initially were which was 27 so we've actually moved from there so we're going to come back onto a heading of 27 slow this aircraft down and we're going to go through it all over again one stage of flaps once again I'm going to trim for whatever speed we want at this point in time you saw that I I tried not to use the ailerons there because I didn't want to I didn't want to get the aircraft stalling right trimming the aircraft up there we go okay great there's the trim I'd say that's good enough for me now bring the power off there's the power is gone little bit of aileron but now I'm using the rudder trying to lift that once again more rudder less aileron there's the incipient stall there's the full stall bring the nose down keep the speed off let that nose come down let the aircraft speed up because otherwise it's not going to have the lift so we're bringing that nose down the aircraft is now speeding up of its own accord the flaps have come in that's what that noise was to allow the aircraft to speed up and now we can bring it back to zero but you're going to see that with this aircraft it is going to stall once again so now what we've done is we've brought it into or I've forced it into a secondary stall once again I'm going to show you that stall incipient stall there's the stall I'm actually now going to aggravate that stall there's you can see that the nose of the aircraft was up but the aircraft still stalled that's 
What I mean by a stall is not to do with the speed, it's to do with the angle of attack. The moment I reduce that angle of attack, the aircraft was fine. Let's get ourselves back on the power. Let's get ourselves back to the airport. All right, so what we're going to do is get ourselves back to the airport at this point in time. Nice and easily. So we'll head for 180. It is lagging a bit, I must say, which is making it harder to fly. There we go. And we're going to get our speed back up to some 90 knots. So now that we know how to get an aircraft into slow speed, what happened is we were at minimum controllability. That's what happened. And once we passed that critical angle of attack, the aircraft stalled, you saw the nose was pitched up the nose was pitched up, but the aircraft was not wanting to climb anymore. That is a stall. Now, that can happen at any speed. If you were to put sufficient force onto the aircraft and force it into a higher than normal angle of attack, that can happen at any speed. Right, so let's do this. We're maintaining about one and a half thousand feet here, very nicely. And you'll see we should be coming up on the airport very, very soon. And that's where we'll land and that's where we'll end this video. The next video we're going to be looking at power on stalls and possibly even uh, cross control stalls. And different. we're going to look at different types of stalls still. So we're going to take off in the air and we might even do some forced, because it's a simulator, we might actually try and do some at low low level as well so exactly replicating what you would do or what would happen in real life one thing to remember is that no matter how much you practice a stall it's never going to be quite as controlled as that in real life it, it just isn't going to be as controlled as that in real life right there's the airport wanted to make sure that we're not too far away there's that uh that lake that we used once for vfr when we were doing our first circuit and the power station or the cooling tower that we used for it. But you can see here that I have my nose pitched up at this point in time, very slightly to maintain this lift at 85 knots. That's absolutely fine, this is normal. In fact, this is now pretty much normal flying once again. Once again, it's normal operation. And it does feel a little bit weird, I will admit. It does feel a little bit weird flying an aircraft and trying to force it to stall. Let's switch that back to Nav 1 on that side, on the radios. Again, I've sh I show how to use that in another video. Not This isn't the, uh, the video for that. We're doing a nice, healthy 85 knots here. Without climbing too much, without dro descending too much. As I say that, we now have a bit of a climb going on. There we go. Sorted. Wonderful. Easy. You can see how easy it is now to fly an aircraft. I'm sure you guys are finding it much easier to fly aircraft now than you have before. Simply because of the fact that you've now, you've followed the tutorials and you understand what's going on with aircraft now. Alright, we should be getting ready to turn to final very soon and as you can see I am maintaining a much slower speed than I have ever before I'm doing this on purpose I prefer doing finals at slightly higher speeds but I'm doing this on purpose because I want to show you as we start turning on to final I'm going to describe what the aircraft feels like as we turn and this is exactly what a real aircraft is going to feel like as well what I feel here is exactly what you're going to feel on a real aircraft and that is a sluggishness in the controls. The, the controls are going to feel like they're not responding as well. And that's because of the airflow. I think I can start turning on to final now. So that feels a lot. It doesn't feel like that's responding as well as I would hope it would, it would respond. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not controllable. The aircraft is more than controllable at this speed, but it doesn't feel quite as nice to fly. Uh, 
and there we go we should be lined up with the runway right about now how fantastic was that all right so now we just wait to acquire the glide bring the aircraft down we'll lower the landing gear at this point in time and give ourselves one stage of flaps very very simple I'm not touching the throttle right now I will be making slight adjustments to the throttle in a bit but at this point in time I am not touching the throttle I'm waiting until we acquire that glide slope before I before I make any adjustments on the throttle now hopefully you guys have enjoyed this if you have don't forget to again like the video subscribe to the channel share the video uh, you know comments on the video letting me know that you you did enjoy the video and you did it has helped you understand because that's you know that's very very important to me to to know that I am making videos and they are turning out how I want them so that's very very important to me also uh, like I said if you can afford to do so and you want to do so please do consider supporting me on patreon link to that is in the description box below that support would be massively massively appreciated it will help me out a huge huge amount right we'll do that give ourselves another stage of flaps like so a little bit more on the power now and we're in landing configuration here for us so yeah that would really really help me out a huge huge amount and the reason being is that it just means that I can I can make a career out of this and you know videos like this are difficult to make um, they're not easy at all to make these sorts of videos um, they take a lot of time they take multiple a lot of them take multiple uh, takes for I mean surprisingly this one I've done in the first take but most of the videos take two or three two or three takes to make uh, of these tutorials anyway and of other videos sometimes I have to repeat them sometimes sometimes I can't repeat them because whatever's happened has happened and then I have to try and fix things between uh, between videos so you know if you can if you can do so please do throw a few dollars my way I would massively massively appreciate that All right, we're coming up on the glide now at this point I am going visual I'm not going to watch the uh, nav instrument although you can watch the nav instrument as you if you want so you can see the difference between the puppy indicators and what the navigation is telling us and you can also I suppose judge my landing Yeah, you can you can probably judge my landing from here. But this should be a nice and simple landing. There's two lights. Just get ourselves down now very very easily maintaining about a 300 foot per minute rate of descent here seems to be about right for the speed we're at 75 knots and you'll notice as I come into landing how I do my best not to stall the aircraft by making sure I flare correctly and this is exactly what that power off power of situation stall was about it's about getting too slow and lifting up the nose too much and that stalls the aircraft you can see here I'm maintaining a nice 75 knots and a really good stable approach to the runway which is a surprise even for me but you know even I can surprise myself at times slightly too high now that's okay at this point I will reduce the power a little bit more I'm still going to maintain a good I'm going to maintain a good approach to the runway 
Looks like I'm a little bit to the right, so I'm going to ease off to the left just a little bit. There we go. That looks a lot better. And there we go. Coming up to the threshold. And at this point, I'm going to start pulling back on the power. Not going to make the center line. That's okay, though. Flare the nose. And we're down. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So, thank you very much for watching. Please remember, like I said, to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Uh, do leave a comment. If you're watching this on Twitch, a thumbs up and a follow, please. That would be really, really great. And if you can afford to do so, do support me on Patreon. Your support would be massively, massively appreciated. That would really, really help me out. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it and let me know if you did. And for those of you who are on Discord and are already supporting me on Patreon and are on Discord, if you have any questions and you want me to explain things in much more depth, just let me know on there and I'll be more than happy to do so. I think that brings me to the end. I shall stop the aircraft here. Like so. And I think uh, I will see you guys next time for lesson number was it 14 i think it might be lesson number 14 13 or 14 and in that we'll look at uh, more stalls and we'll be doing power on stalls and we'll learn just a little bit more about uh, the different types of stalls and then from there from there we can probably do another solo flight so we will probably be doing that if we can thank you very much for watching and i will see you guys next time in the ground up advanced flight tutorials